The NVIDIA GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 are both fairly powerful gaming graphics cards, but which should you pick, and is it worth upgrading? In this video we'll check out a heap of game benchmarks at 4K, 1440p and 1080p to help you see the performance difference between them. I recently retested both the Nvidia GTX 1070 and 1080 graphics cards to compare against the 2070 in previous videos, but figured it would also be worthwhile doing an updated comparison between the 1070 and 1080 to see how they're going going into 2019. Let's take a quick look at how the 1070 and 1080 actually differ in terms of specs. Note that things like clock speed and power will vary between specific cards. These are just the reference specs for each model. Important differences to take note of are that the 1080 has more CUDA cores, higher base and boost clock speeds, and more and faster memory, so an improvement in most aspects. For testing I'm using the EVGA 1080 for the Win 2 and the Galax 1070 EC. Both come overclocked out of the box, so expect different results with different cards, although I've only seen differences of a few FPS myself. The system that I'm testing with has an AMD Ryzen 2700X CPU in an MSI X470 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard running at stock speeds, along with 16GB of T-Force Nighthawk CL16 memory from Team Group running at DDR4 3200 in dual channel. Check the links in the description for details on all of the components as well as for up to date pricing. The same Windows version and Nvidia drivers were used for the testing, and with all games I've only tested at max settings. As for most titles, these should be more GPU bound to help us see the differences. So with that in mind, let's get into the results. Fortnite was tested with the same replay at epic settings, and this game saw one of the biggest performance improvements going from 1070 to 1080 graphics. At 4K and 1440p, the 1% low results from the 1080 was even above the average frame rate of the 1070. With the 1080p resolution, the average frame rate of the GTX 1080 was 31% better than the 1070, and then just a little lower at 1440p and 4K in this test. Overwatch was tested in the practice range so that I can easily repeat the same test run, and there was less of a difference between the two in this game, although the 1% low from the 1080 was still ahead of the 1070's average frame rate at 4K and 1440p but realistically still perfectly playable on either card at 1440p and epic settings. At 1080p there was a 20% improvement to the average FPS with the GTX 1080, a 24% improvement at 1440p, and then a 28% improvement to 4K. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode rather than multiplayer, as it's easier to consistently reproduce the test run, and even at max settings I found either card could play the game well at 1440p or below. With a 1080p resolution, the GTX 1080 was getting average frame rates 20% higher than the 1070, 22% higher at 1440p, and then 31% better at 4K. CSGO was tested with the Uletical benchmark, and there was less of a difference between the 1080 and 1070 in this game. And this game saw the lowest increase with the 1080 out of all games tested. There was far less of a change between the 1% low results at all three resolutions, and then in terms of average frame rates there was just a 9% improvement to 1080p, 8% improvement at 1440p, and 11% improvement at 4K. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the built in benchmark, and the improvements here were also on the lower side compared to most of the other games tested, although even at max settings and with a 4K resolution the 1070 was still able to average above 60fps in this test. At 1080p, the GTX 1080 was averaging 18% higher than the 1070, 22% better at 1440p, and 25% better at 4K. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was also tested with the built-in benchmark, and some nice improvements are seen here with the 1080. This game saw the largest percentage improvement at 1440p and 4K out of all games tested. At 1080p, the GTX 1080 was getting 26% better average frame rates than the GTX 1070. 31% better at 1440p, and 32% better at 4K. Far Cry 5 was tested with the built in benchmark, and both were able to get above 60fps at 1440p or below in this test with max settings. There wasn't as big of a difference with this game compared to others, the 1080 was performing 9% better at 1080p, 23% better at 1440p, and 27% better at 4K. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was tested with the built in benchmark, 
and this game saw lower improvements with the GTX 1080 compared to most of the other games that were tested. The frame rates at ultra high settings aren't that great as this doesn't seem to be a very well optimised game. Although at the same time, I don't think it needs a high frame rate to play. At 1080p, there was a 16% improvement with the GTX 1080 over the 1070 in average frame rate, a 20% improvement at 1440p, and a 24% improvement at 4K. PUBG was tested using the same replay, and at 1440p, even with ultra settings, the 1070 was almost able to average 60fps in this test. Though of course, expect much better with lower settings. With a 1080p resolution, the GTX 1080 was scoring 24% better than the 1070 in average FPS, and then almost 29% better at both 1440p and 4K. Watch Dogs 2 is a fairly resource intensive game, but I can play it perfectly fine with a solid 30fps. So 4K with the 1080 even maxed out actually mostly went okay for me, and then perfectly fine with either card at any other resolution and setting. At 1080p, the GTX 1080 was giving us average frame rates 16% better than the 1070, 20% better at 1440p, and 28% better at 4K. The Witcher 3 was tested with Hairworks disabled, but ultra settings are still pretty intensive compared to the other settings in this game. Despite this though, even at 1440p, both graphics cards were able to average above 60fps at ultra settings. With a 1080p resolution, the GTX 1080 was getting average frame rates 30% higher than the 1070, 28% higher at 1440p, and 27% higher at 4K. So one of the only games to lower the gap at high resolutions. Shadow of War was tested with the built-in benchmark at ultra settings, and once again there were some fair improvements seen with the 1080 graphics. There was a 24% improvement at 1080p, 25% better at 1440p, and then 28% better at 4K. In terms of overall improvement, over all of the games tested at max settings with a 1080p resolution, on average the 1080 is performing 20% better than the 1070, although we can see there is quite a big difference between the various games. At 1440p on average, over the same games, the 1080 was now performing 23% better than the 1070, but again it really varies depending on the specific game. On average, we expect the performance gap to widen at higher resolutions, because higher resolutions are more GPU bound. Finally, at 4K, the 1080 was now on average 26% better than the 1070 in these games. But again, this really varies based on the specific game, and we're seeing the biggest difference here as 4K gaming is much less CPU bound. It's worth noting that the newer 20 series did introduce newer features like ray tracing and DLSS. However, at the time of recording, both features are pretty scarce in games. But this should in theory change over time, and hopefully the technologies see further improvements. As at the moment, both still feel like they should be in beta. I haven't tested overclocking here, as results aren't guaranteed and will vary between hardware based on what overclocks you can get. Although as both are pre-overclocked cards, we'll likely only see a small difference of a few FPS. Now for the final difference, the price. I suggest checking updated prices using the links in the description, as prices will change over time. At the time of recording, new 1080s seem to be going for around 500 to 550 US dollars on Amazon, while the 1070 is around the $400 price point. But you've also got the option of paying even less with the secondhand market, and of course prices will vary between region. You can do your own math based on the prices you find, but if we're going from a $400 GTX 1070, to $500 1080, that's 25% more money for the GTX 1080, which seems reasonable considering we saw a 23% improvement on average at 1440p. So which graphics would you pick, the 1070 or 1080? When it comes down to it, I think either card is still capable of giving you a great gaming experience going into 2019. If you've already got a 1070, I don't think there's that much of a benefit in upgrading to a 1080 today. It still gives decent FPS in most games. Up to you if you want more of course. If you sell the 1070, there's not too much of a price difference for some fair gains. If you're buying today, realistically neither are 4K cards, but both are able to give good 1440p performance, even with max settings tested here. You could of course get even higher frame rates at lower settings. If I was buying today, I'd probably go the 1080, which is pretty much what I did around a year ago when I bought it new. I only got the 1070 second hand just for benchmarking. Let me know which card you'd pick down in the comments.
and don't forget to subscribe for more comparisons and future tech videos like this one.